Hello, my friends. How are you? If you are new here, I highly recommend you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell down to not miss a single one of our new lesson. And give to us some support by hitting like button. There is no doubt. Our lessons will help you to improve your English fluency. And good luck learning English. Lesson 19 Hobbes Story, Uncle Theophilus I'm afraid we're rather late in getting into Mr. Priestley's lesson today, it looks as if it's just finishing, but we'll listen to the last part of it. Mr. Priestley Well, I think that's enough grammar for today, but before we go on to something else, do you remember, Hob, what an auxiliary verb is? Hob, an auxiliary verb? An auxiliary? No, I'm sorry I don't know. Mr. Priestley, but I told you about it only yesterday. Hob, yes, I've heard the word, at least I think I have, but I've completely forgotten all about it. Mr. Priestley, oh, Hob, what a memory you've got. Hob, yes, it's terrible, isn't it? But talking about memory reminds me of my uncle Theophilus. Lucille, what, another uncle? Hob, oh yes, and the best of the family. May I tell them about him, Mr. Priestley? Mr. Priestley, well, as I don't suppose you'll ever know what an auxiliary is, and as this lesson is really over now, I think you might as well. Hob, thank you sir. Well, my uncle Theophilus, we always call him Theo, is the uncle with the real brains. You would like him, Mr. Priestley, he could tell you at once what an auxiliary is. He's my oldest uncle, a tall, thin, grey-haired man whose thoughts were always on learning and nothing else. He's quiet and gentle and absent-minded and with about as much sense as a child where money is concerned. Well, he applied for a post in Camford University. It was a very good post and there were hundreds of candidates who applied for it, and about fifteen including Theo, were asked to go to be interviewed. Now Camford is a very small town, there is only one hotel in it, and this was so full that they had to put many of the candidates two in a room. Theo was one of these, and the man who shared the room with him was a self-confident fellow called Adams, about twenty years younger than Theo, with a loud voice, and a laugh that you could hear all over the hotel. But he was a clever fellow all the same and had a good post in Iscariot College, Nark over. Well the dean, that's the head of the department of the university, and the committee interviewed all the candidates, and, as a result of this interview, the number was reduced to two, Uncle Theo and Adams. The committee couldn't decide which of the two to take, so they decided to make their final choice after each candidate had given a public lecture in the college lecture hall. The subject they had to speak on was, just a moment while I look at my notebook. Yes, it was the civilization of the ancient Sumerians, and the lecture had to be given in three days' time. Well, for three days Uncle Theo never left his room. He worked day and night at that lecture, writing it out and memorizing it, almost without eating or sleeping. Adams didn't seem to do any preparation at all. You could hear his voice and his laughter in the bar where he had a crowd of people round him. He came to his room late at night, asked Uncle Theo how he was getting on with his lecture, and then told him how he had spent the evening playing billiards, or at the theatre or music hall. He ate like a horse and slept like a log, and Uncle Theo sat up working at his lecture. He slept like a log. The day of the lecture arrived. They all went into the lecture room and Theo and Adams took their seats on the platform. And then, Theo discovered, to his horror, that the typewritten copy of his speech had disappeared. The dean said he would call on the candidates in alphabetical order, Adams first, and, with despair in his heart, Theo watched Adams calmly take the stolen speech out of his pocket and read it to the professors who were gathered to hear it. And how well he read it. Even Theo had to admit that he couldn't have read it nearly so eloquently himself, and when Adams finished there was a great burst of applause. Adams bowed and smiled, and sat down. 
Now it was Theo's turn. But what could he do? He had put everything he knew into that lecture. His mind was too much upset to put the same thoughts in another way. With a burning face he could only repeat, word for word, in a low, dull voice the lecture that Adams had spoken so eloquently. There was hardly any applause when he sat down. The dean and the committee went out to decide who the successful candidate was, but everyone was sure what their decision would be. Adams leaned across to Theo and patted him on the back and said, smilingly, hard luck, old fellow, but, after all, only one of us could win. Then the dean and committee came back. Gentlemen, the dean said, the candidate we have chosen is Mr. Hobdell. Uncle Theo had won. You could have knocked him down with a feather. The audience were completely taken by surprise, and the dean continued, I think I ought to tell you how we arrived at that decision. We were all filled with admiration at the learning and eloquence of Mr. Adams. I was greatly impressed, I didn't think he had it in him. But, you will remember, Mr. Adams read his lecture to us. When Mr. Hobdell's turn came, he repeated that speech, word by word from memory, though, of course, he couldn't have seen a line of it before. Now a fine memory is absolutely necessary for this post, and what a memory Mr. Hobdell must have. That is why we decided that Mr. Hobdell was exactly the man we wanted. As they walked out of the room, the dean came up to Uncle Theo, who was so confused but so happy that he hardly knew whether he was standing on his head or his heels, and as he shook Theo's hand he said, Congratulations, Mr. Hobdell. But, my dear fellow, when you are on our staff, you must be more careful and not leave valuable papers lying about. Mr. Priestley, which just shows that deans, and even teachers of English, are not quite so innocent as some people think they are. Well, Hob, you may not have a memory like your uncle Theophilus, but you certainly can tell a good story. Exercises Exercise 1. Use the following words and phrases in sentences. Completely. Share. Terrible. Memorize. Concerned. Var. Apply. Billiards. Absent-minded. To his horror. Nothing else. Eloquently. All the same. Applause. Interview. Verb. Word for word. Final. Feather. Candidate. Valuable. Exercise 2. Answer these questions. 1. What relation was Hob to Theo? 2. How many people applied for the post at Camford? 3. What sort of a man was Uncle Theo? 4. What sort of a man was Adams? 5. How did Uncle Theo spend his time before the lecture? 6. How did Adam spend it? 7. Why did Hob need to look at his notebook while telling this story? 8. Why didn't Adam's trouble to do any preparation? 9. Why did Adam say, hard luck, old fellow, before they had heard the committee's decision? 10. Do you think any of the committee guessed Adam's had stolen the papers? Give a reason for your answer. Exercise 3. Rewrite these sentences, replacing the dashes with one of the following, some, any, something, someone, anything, anyone. 1. There was hardly applause for Uncle Theo. 2. Adams didn't seem to do preparation. 3. Perhaps the dean guest was wrong. 4. People thought Adams should have the job. 5. Hob didn't know about auxiliaries. 6. He just remembered he had heard about them yesterday. 7. People have bad memories. 8. Are there cigarettes in the box? 9. No, I'm afraid there aren't left. 10. Must have smoked them all. 11. I'll go out and get more. 12. Won't come with me. 13. Child knows more English grammar than Hob. 14. 
I don't know who can tell a story as well as Hob. 15. I want fresh strawberries, have you? 16. Andrew can't have more apples, I'm keeping for Lillian. 17. Has borrowed my pen. 18. Is else coming today? 19. I thought I heard at the door. 20. I hope there aren't more of these sentences. Exercise 4. In the following sentences replace the words in brackets by a single word of the same meaning. All the words are taken from this piece. 1. They, people who applied for the job, all came to Camford. 2. They were all, seen and asked questions, by the committee. 3. Adams didn't seem to do any, work to be ready, for the exam. 4. After the orchestra finished there was great, clapping and cheering. 5. Sir Winston Churchill spoke so, well and with such feeling, that everyone was stirred. 6. The singer, bent his body as a sign of respect, to the audience. 7. The headmaster couldn't, make up his mind, what to do with the boy. 8. I shan't, say again, the lesson on auxiliaries. 9. I made a copy of the speech, and now I'm trying to, get into my memory, the first ten lines. 10. This bracelet is, worth a lot of money. Composition Exercises 1. Tell or write in your own words the story of the public lecture and the committee's decision. 2. He who laughs last, laughs loudest, English proverb. This was true in the case of Uncle Theo. Can you tell another story in which it was true? 3. Have you ever applied for a job? If so, tell or write the story of what happened. Dear friends, thank you for watching our channel and learning English with us. Subscribe. And we wish you great luck in achieving your goals.